there are at least five features to be accounted for. Assuming that you're not entirely satisfied with explanations based on divine intervention or sacrificial rites, then you might be interested in looking at some mathematical models and the history of how they developed into today's explanation. The mathematical approach is to develop a model and then refine it to fit the data. Over the years, there have been many theories, but all have been lacking in some aspects. One stumbling block which lasted for centuries was a controversy over whether the rainbow involves an entire cloud or individual raindrops. The Greek philosopher Aristotle in about 300 BC constructed an explanatory model which assumed that the entire heavens were a sphere. At the center of the Greeks' universe was the Earth, and so at dawn, say, the sun is on the horizon at the edge of the universe. Aristotle argued that the rainbow effect was then caused by the reflection of sunlight on a cloud at a point where the distances from the sun and from the earthbound observer were in exactly the right fixed ratio. An easier way to think of this is that the angle between the rays will be fixed. Aristotle said that the rainbow had a circular shape because the universe was spherical. So the same effect would be created in all directions. Rotating the diagram about the line from the sun to the earthbound observer gives two cones of light, one spreading out from the sun, surrounding an inner one converging on the observer's eye. You'll be seeing that this part of the model isn't very different to our present-day explanation of a Bose circularity. But Aristotle's view fell down in other respects, and particularly when it came to explaining the colours. He said that red light was stronger than, say, blue, because red travelled a shorter distance from the sun to the cloud. That made the critical ratio slightly smaller for blue, and that's why the red cone of light surrounds the blue cone, and hence the red arc is seen outside the blue arc. Alexander disagreed with Aristotle's theory, since it didn't explain his dark band and it didn't account for a reversal of colours in the secondary bow. However, Aristotle's model did account for the constant angle drawn from the top of the bow down to the top of the observer's shadow. You can see that a circular bow is a consequence of rotating this fixed angle made with the shadow line. From the ground, you see at most half a circle, but you can see more than half a circle if you go up high enough and have a ready supply of water droplets close by. Then, much more of the rainbow circle can be seen in the water droplets. Aristotle didn't measure the fixed angle from the shadow out to the bow. In fact, that was left to a 13th century Englishman, Roger Bacon. He measured the angle to be 42 degrees. But knowing the angle of elevation didn't solve all the problems. For 400 years, Islamic and Christian scientists were still to argue about the physics. Is the light just reflected back from the cloud, or is it somehow bent or refracted as well? Is the whole cloud involved in creating the bow, or can the behaviour of light in individual raindrops be used to explain the effect? At the start of the 14th century, Kamal al-Din in Persia and a German monk, Theodoric of Freiburg, each independently concluded that both reflection and refraction have a part to play, not only in the cloud, but also in each spherical raindrop. Theodoric placed flasks in the sunlight and fill them with water to model how light rays might behave in a raindrop. He then drew construction lines, showing how the rays were reflected off the back of the flask and were also refracted into and out of his raindrop.
He believed that each drop in the cloud created a part of the complete rainbow. Theodoric was actually very close to fully describing light's behavior within a raindrop. A ray of light striking the drop at its center will mostly pass straight through. However, some light will be reflected straight back from the back of the drop. But another ray hitting the drop away from the center line will be refracted as it enters. Then some of the light will reflect off the back of the drop at an angle to be refracted again as it leaves. At other entry points, the light exits in other directions. But what's important to the rainbow's creation is that no light exits at an angle greater than Bacon's 42 degrees to the sunlight. And also, that there is a high concentration of light near to that fixed angle. You can see how much of the light that enters on one side of the center line exits at this 42 degree angle on the other. But the drop isn't a circle, it's a sphere. And so this light enters at points all around the center line and exits as a cone of light, which is clearer to visualize if the incoming light is hidden. The concept of a cone dates back to the 14th century, but an explanation of the colors had to wait 300 years. Then, mathematicians such as Newton observed that sunlight is a mixture of many colors and each refracts differently. Consequently, red light returns a cone of light looking like this, whereas the cone for violet light looks like this. That's what happens in a single raindrop. But what about all the other raindrops in the cloud? These can be thought of as filling all parts of the cloud, because even though they are constantly falling, they are being continually replaced. Sunlight hitting drops in the cloud will return as cones of colored light. High up in the cloud, the colored light is cast above the observer's head. Lower down, the returning light gets nearer and nearer to the observer's eye until there comes a point at which first part of the red cone reaches the observer's eye, but not the violet cone. However, from a drop a little lower, just the violet light reaches the observer. The angle from the observer's shadow up to the direction of colored light is about 42 degrees, as Bacon had measured. But remember, this is just a sideways view. And this is not the only place in the cloud that returns light at 42 degrees to the observer's shadow line. For instance, there will be another drop to the side, which is still at 42 degrees to the observer's shadow. And another one here, again at 42 degrees to the shadow line. and so on, from certain drops all around the cloud. It turns out that the parts of the cloud from which this rainbow light can be seen lie within the arc of a circle centered on the line of the observer's shadow. 